had this uh, plugged in without the transport in it just to test the mixer and a lot of stuff in there sounding really rough um, it sounds like we've got some either dirty or maybe even some soldering problems with the input jacks and uh, crackly pots and everything. So tip here especially if you're working with a machine where you're not very familiar with what wire goes where I've got a bunch of coloured sharpie pens and I've coloured in both sides of the plug so I've got some kind of colour guide about where these go back I can't really show you exactly without tipping it, but see this one here, you can see in the base of that Molex pin header, then it's got brown marker pin in it. Then I know when I come to plug this back in that I'm looking for the connector with brown ink on it. It just saves me from getting confused when I'm reassembling it. In order to get this out, I've removed two screws here, and then it tips like that. But that hinge mechanism is based on two screws here. And I can't really get them out without removing all the control panel and everything and I'd like to be able to clean those switches and so on anyway. I mean, you can, sorry that's going to be out of shot, but see where I'm tapping at the bottom here? There's six screws that attach that board to these hinges. I think it's less labour intensive to remove this you know, and to clean it and then remove those two screws at the side there that I'm pointing to. So with this, this is partially disassembled, um, but there's a screw here wide ferrule that goes into a plastic mounting post that I'm pointing at there. That then causes this to tip up on a hinge. I've actually removed that, but basically the two pins at the bottom of this board go through two slots here. You can push it off to one side like that and then it'll come out. When that's dangling off, then you're faced with this board. There's one, two, three screws holding that in place. You lift that out and then you've got these two boards, um, two screws holding that one and two screws holding that one. At the point that you've detached all of those, then that's gonna come out like that and that is one unit. And um, you can give these uh, switches a clean, these switches here as well for the record arm. I'm then free to access these two screws which will allow me to remove this board. With that record play amplifier board out of the way, I still need to remove this board with the fuses and the power filtration capacitors on it. So there's two screws, one's a smaller large ferrule and one's a larger large ferrule. Um, when you lift that up then uh, these two tabs here go into slots on the back panel here. Also be aware that there's a little black plastic spacer that sits there that stops this from shorting out against here. I had a power problem with one that I thought I'd successfully rebuilt years ago when I didn't really know what I was doing. I suspect I lost that and didn't put that back in so when it did power up then something here was shorting against this board. So do be aware of that. It looks like we've got one, two, three, four, or five of the same kind of long shank screws that were being used to attach the cassette player to the chassis. So I'll just remove them and report back to you if I find any other screws. Removing those five screws allows me to lift this out. And it's all attached to a metal plate here, sorry I can't get a better angle for that. But the whole thing is attached to uh, this back plate here and um, that's a bit awkward. I don't want to have to remove the entire transformer. It looks like if I remove one, two, three, four, five, six plastic panels here, then I can detach that mixer from this back plate. I can't see any way to remove those pins without first desoldering these VUs. That's really awkward, so I'm going to have to leave it attached to that back plate with the upper case and the transformer and everything hanging off. Just a bit of an oversight in the way that it's been designed. It's not really designed with the technician in mind. I've removed uh, some of the end caps that are on these switches. End caps like this on the jack sockets and um, so sort of rubber dust protector. And it goes over these faders that hooks over I've removed and joy oh joy it looks like I've got five screws and 26 nuts to remove before I can get this metal plate off the mixer board and access the components beneath. I don't know exactly what was on all of these uh, nuts that I just removed there but it was very sticky to the touch and there's a little bit of Windex in there and you can see that it's turning brown with whatever was on there. I don't know if it was some sort of adhesive to stop that coming loose. Well anyway it's 
turned nasty and I think that's part of why that mixer is in such bad condition. Short narrow ferrule screws that are coming out of there. At that point, that plate will come away. I guess that plate's there because there's no metal chassis inside the plastic case like there is on say a 244, 144. And I've already noticed one of the plastic mounting posts is broken on this. Um, I've had that and I had a couple of these before. There was a lot of that problem. So maybe not quite such robust design as a 244 or a 144 though. Frankly, the 144 is an absolute bitch to work on. I'd rather work on this. But yeah, we've got some pretty chunky looking faders there. I imagine there's quite a lot of gunk that's caught up in there. So I'll do my usual routine. I've got some deoxid that's combined lubricant and contact cleaner, but I'll probably have a pass with Servisol Super 10 and compressed air first just because it was such a filthy sounding mixer.